So let's then have a look at the, the organization uh, of this course uh, this year. Uh, so what we want to do is uh, in the course is to uh, explore the economic theory behind competition law. That's the first part. And second part is we also want to explore some of the actual EU cases because we want to know how this theory is used in practice. So how are we going to achieve those goals? Well, first of all, through lectures. So in the lectures, I'm going to discuss uh, well, the papers that are on your reading list and also parts of, uh, of the book that you have, a book by Malta. And these lectures will uh, this year, of course, be uh, online, so on video in particular. Uh, so apart from that, we will also have some work by you, basically videos by you as groups. Uh, so in the previous years, we used to have presentations in the class, essentially, uh, of groups uh, of you, basically. And so we're going to uh, have uh, videos by you of presentations of particular EU cases. So there will be a number of cases and you will be assigned as a group to discuss, essentially, to give a fairly short discussion, like 10 or 15 minutes, of one of these particular cases. And you can at some point uh, soon uh, sign up uh, for which which group you'd like to belong to and which case you would like to discuss. Uh, so I'll get back to that a bit later. Then we'll have exercises. So exercises which actually look like the exercises that you will have to do during the exam in which we're going to practice, well, basically the, the math, if you wish, the theory, the economic theory of you know, how does competition theory, what does competition theory look like, how does it work. And we're going to discuss those in tutorials and those will be presented by uh, by Alat van der Maarde, my colleague. And then finally there will be an assignment that you will do. Uh, you can actually do this again in a small group up to three people. And this assignment will be uh, essentially a computational, a quantitative assignment uh, in the area of merger simulation. And it's going to be based on a paper that you will have to read and to, uh, to grasp yourself. And so you have to work on that a paper by Epstein and, uh, and Rubenfeld that you will also find in your reading list. And this assignment will be um, done by you well, during this uh, during this uh, course, and uh, I think the deadline will be uh, in the first week after Christmas. So I'll get back to that as well, of course. And so what are we going to do week by week? So after today's introduction, essentially, what we're going to do in week two and three, the second and third week, we're going to have a look primarily on mergers. So in particular, that's going to be uh, from the book by Mota, focusing on chapter five. Uh, but we'll also focus on a paper, a paper of Ferro and Shapiro on Kuno markets. And we'll focus in particular in the third week on merger simulation. So Ferro and Shapiro, Kuno markets, so quantity setting, that's Kuno, right? Merger simulation mostly deals with price setting in markets in which there are multiple products typically which are imperfect, uh, imperfect uh, substitutes for each other. So it's differentiated uh, product markets with price setting. What can we say there about uh, equilibrium and how do equilibria change as you have a merger? So it's, you know, computing that is called merger simulation and um, we'll study in particular uh, a paper which well, appeared actually as part of an actual case by the European Commission, the Sarah Lee case, and well this Particular case, a long case, but it has a technical appendix, which is basically a paper by by itself. And this technical appendix actually outlines how this uh, such a merger simulation might be uh, conducted. And we'll also have a look at the, the recent paper by Björn, Stedt, and Verboven, where they also do a merger simulation, um, actually verifying uh, the effects of a merger ex post, so after it has taken place, to see how effective such a merger simulation actually is. So that's uh, mergers in week two and three. In the next three weeks, we'll have a look at vertical issues. So we'll look at uh, vertical mergers, first of all, but then also at um, agreements and at the behaviors uh, called exclusion and tying. And here, actually, our main text is the chapter, paper or chapter, it's a chapter actually from a handbook by Ray and Tirol. So that's on, uh, on vertical uh, 
of vertical behaviors, vertical exclusion, exclusionary behavior, basically. Um, and uh, we also refer here a bit to, you know, it's reflected also, and you can have a look at that as well uh, in chapter six of Malta and a little bit of chapter seven, actually. In particular, tying is discussed in Malta in chapter seven. And we also have a look at uh, the Winston's paper on the Microsoft case, which neatly summarizes uh, some of these issues, and it will actually also be important for, say, the upcoming cases and also the recent case against the uh, big tech, in particular the Google case, the Android tie-in case. That's a useful background because these cases look a little bit, the Microsoft case back from 2010, well, the early 2000s, uh, resembles to some extent uh, some of the issues in the current, uh, the current debate. And then finally week seven, which is actually the week after Christmas, uh, we'll have, uh, we'll discuss an example uh, of uh, competition policy and competition theory in the arena of platforms and advertising. So this is uh, geared basically at this, this current discussion on, uh, on digital economics, platform economics. And we'll have a discussion particularly on well, a paper, a recent paper by Choi and John. Um, and also a recent, the, you know, this Choi and John paper has or is being published right now. And then there was the second paper is actually a preprint by um, my colleagues, ha uh, Marco Hahn and Annette Toffers and myself, in which we also discuss competition issues actually in uh, in these digital platforms, which rely, well, which rely on advertising basically uh, as a source of, as an important source of revenue. So that will be an application if you wish. So then there will be these cases. Uh, so as I just mentioned, these will be group presentations. So you will sign up for a particular slot and, and, and for a particular group on a particular case. And you will produce a presentation which you present just like I'm doing this presentation essentially uh, with you know, two or three of you in 10 or 15 minutes for you in order to see what uh, an actual case looks like and in order to delve through the the legal text and find the economic parts basically in this, this typically fairly long decisions of the European Commission present particularly those economic uh, arguments for yourself but also for your fellow course um, students who, uh, who will uh, sort of learn from you know, your presentation how these actual cases work you know what are the moving parts in these in these decisions from an economic point of view so in the, the first case that we'll discuss or that you will discuss is in the third it's going to be in the third week which is about a horizontal merger and right? the ryanair air lingus case which was a merger which was prohibited uh, by the commission so have a look at that then in the fourth week, uh, there will be a case on a vertical merger, particularly the TomTom Teleatlas. So TomTom is, is navigation software uh, and hardware, actually. And Teleatlas was, uh, was a provider of, of maps. Then in week 15, we have a look, week, week 50, which is so then the fifth week of this course, I presume, is uh, you will deal with some some of you will discuss the intel case which is a case about abuse or article 102 back then article 82 the sixth week you will discuss the this actual google android case about the tying of android uh, to uh, and um, and google search and the abuse case against again and in week two so in the next year we'll have a look at the Apple Shazam merger. So this is a merger in the context of digital platforms and it will be good for you to see what the economic analysis of such a case might look like. So that's a fairly recent uh, recent merger case. So I'm going to ask you, of course, to, to sign up for these, uh, for, for, for groups discussing these cases in, in small numbers, so two to three people, I suppose, uh, on, um, on Nestor, uh, so I open, um, I'll open, uh, I'll actually, I, I will have opened by now the um, uh, a page on Nestor, in which you can actually sign up for for either for any of these of these five cases as a group. 
and then at the at point at the point when these groups are clear then we can have contact as a group with me and you to discuss what actually I'm expecting of you. So grading important as well uh, for you mostly. Um, the larger part of your grade will be determined by the final exam or by the recent exam if you fail that final exam. So that, that will make up 80% of your grade. So the final exam will consist of exercises like the ones in your tutorials. So particular, uh, actually these, most of, or many of the tutorial exercises that we will do are, actually are from past exams. Uh, and you can actually, uh, you will be asked about you know, everything that we do. So the book, this particular chapter from Red and to Roll, the papers that we discuss and that you are, are to read, um, the lecture material, the videos, the tutorials, the assignment that you are going to make, so on this merger simulation case, and also these uh, case uh, presentations uh, up to point. So you have to be aware of you know, what, not every detail of these cases, of course, but at least, you know, uh, broadly speaking, what these cases are about. Uh, so the rest of your grade, so apart from this 8%, will be, uh, well, 10% from your presentation of the case and 10% from this assignment. Um, for the case presentation, I am sort of fairly uh, easy to satisfy here so i am pretty generous here with my grading so if you do a, you know, a good job you get a good grade basically and uh, so this will typically uh, so if you provide you put in some effort this will not this is not going to hurt your final grade so the assignment you know that's again something you have to do and that you can do right or less right so there's you know, more variation presumably in grades uh, there again you can do those in groups actually so that's the second 10 percent here and there will be no repairs for these, so you can you will have uh, these these grades for presentation and assignment will uh, remain there also for your reset. So that was uh, basically the uh, course organization. Uh, if you have questions, by the way, uh, I'll open up or there, there will be a, uh, um, a discussion board in which you can actually discuss any questions that you might have. Uh, and the benefit of that is that everybody can access that. So if you have a particular question which only pertains to you, you can of course also uh, mail me or and we can either make an appointment or deal with this by, by mail, obviously. Uh, so that's uh, the course organization. Uh, next bit, this next video actually is going to be but basically a review. So what was it again with competition? So why do we want to protect competition? What are the benefits of competition? So we're go going to have a small review of welfare effects of competitive uh, markets.